After the fallout surrounding Donald Trump's widely criticized meeting with Vladimir Putin, Russo-American relations took another twist, with the U.S. president inviting his Russian counterpart to the White House. Well, earlier I spoke to The Times journalist Edward Lucas, and I started by asking him about the significance of this second meeting. I think there's two levels to this. One is the actual meeting itself, which is an extraordinary change, given how Russia was in the kind of diplomatic cooler after the attack on Ukraine, the attack on the American political system, the attack on the French political system, the hacking of Germany, all the other things that are going on. And then secondly, is the way Trump's done it just by tweeting it, or well, not tweeting it, but by, by announcing it through his press secretary without the Russians um, even seeming to know that this offer was coming. So it's a sign again of this sort of impulsive unpredictability, which has become a, a hallmark of the Trump presidency. Indeed, it has. And one of the reactions that we've seen, uh, especially from America, is that many are saying, well, we've never seen this kind of relationship uh, between an American and a Russian president before. So how do you think Trump has changed American-Russian relations since he came into power? I think he's uh, highly personalized it. He's just like um, meeting sort of one meeting with possibly an American interpreter there that we aren't, aren't sure about that, uh, takes personal diplomacy to a very level. And, of course, that was the way that he ran the Trump organization as well when he was, was he a businessman, a very small circle of um, trusted associates and lots of um, personal interaction and deals. And that, that's very foreign to the American political system, which uh, it involves big institutions with a lot of weight and a lot of expertise, typically moving quite slowly and deliberately uh, with a very careful assessment of the pluses and minuses. So that's, that's highly unusual. And also, it's very f much forward-looking. He doesn't care what's happened in the past. And of course, the Allies mind desperately about that because they say, we came and fought for you in Afghanistan and in Iraq, which weren't really any of our business, if we are Estonians or um, Czechs or French or whatever. And now you're turning around and saying, I'm not sure I want to defend you because why should um, America have to defend other countries? So the idea that history counts absolutely for nothing, uh, anything that matters is the, the here and now and, 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 and the deal, is also astonishing for a country which has been uh, the geopolitical leader of the West for 70 years um, and now seems to be chucking it all out of the window.